Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for having back into this Tropical Storm discussion for September 7th, 2020. Before I get on to today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from Dweather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest Dweather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization so please watch the whole video it really does help out my channel a lot and also please give this video a like and share this with your friends thank you now let's get on with today's video so in today's video we're going to be talking about two tropical storms that have just developed tropical storm paulette and tropical storm reen Okay, these two have just developed, and we're going to be focusing on that on these two tropical storms today. And could these both be hurricanes, potentially? As of right now, Reen has a much better chance to become a hurricane than Paulette. Even though Paulette is now forecast to become a hurricane, it certainly could. All right, and I will explain why in this video, so we're going to be tracking Paulette and Reen in this video. So, Paulette has winds of 40 miles an hour. Again, a newly developed tropical storm is probably going to have winds similar to this. Um, advisory number four here, uh, winds of 40 miles per hour, pressure is 1,005 millibars, and it's only moving northwest at three miles per hour. All right, so as you saw, I mean, you can even see in the modeling, even a week ago, they were showing something like this. All right, it, this Paulette is just not moving. Now, Reen, Reen is moving. It's at a good clip. It's moving at a perfectly average speed for a tropical system, maybe just a touch under. Um, moving at 40 miles an hour, but the pressure is a lot lower, actually, 1,001 millibars, so... If you look at the satellite imagery, rain will probably look a lot better than Paulette because when it's lower pressure, the storm looks a lot, uh, looks like it's circulating better. It looks like it's healthier a little bit, even though the winds still are the same. Uh, this is the third advisory for rain. So rain might develop after Paulette. Um, and this is moving again, west, northwest at 12 miles an hour. So it's kind of moving in a direction sort of like this, all right, like a west, northwest direction, not perfectly west, but Paulette is moving northwest. All right, so the question is, do these both go out to sea? Do they both head towards the Caribbean and the U.S.? Uh, that's something we're going to have to be talking about in this video as well, something to consider. So here is the 5 p.m. advisor for Paulette. As you can see, a lot of little little dots here, so a lot of updating you're doing on this. Um, and yes, it's supposed to be a forecast speed tropical storm. I will be showing you the other the interactive map as well, so you can see exactly how strong their forecasting system to become. But notice this, by 2 p.m. Saturday, I mean, it's, it's not moving that fast. That's why the dots are so close together. All right, so basically 24 hours from now, it may be like right here. And right now it's right there. So it's not going to move too much, even in a 24-hour period, even though a lot of time has passed. Now, as for tropical storm wind probabilities, as you can see, no land, no land mass is within this. So that's good news. Caribbean is way out here. So the Caribbean will probably not see hurricane force or tropical storm force winds. But if it happens to track a little bit farther south, maybe watch out for some stronger waves. Um, that's always it, it, that's when a closer passing tropical system. It's always nice, or it's always um, it's it's smart to watch out for those waves, those rip currents that can be a problem. But no, not even any minor or major impacts uh, associated with Paulette to the Caribbean as of now. But maybe a potential threat to Bermuda. Now, let's take a look here at the interactive map because this tells us exactly how strong this system can get according to the National Hurricane Center. Now, as you can see, the tropical storm force wind field is a little bit small, and it's way to it's kind of like to the top right of the system, right? We're not seeing too much tropical storm force winds to the north. It's more, it's kind of restrained to the northeast side. So, as you can see here, 2 p.m. on the 9th of September, winds of 60 miles an hour gusting to 70. It's going to be the same. Two at 2 a.m. on the 10th, 2 p.m. on the 10th, okay, 2 2 p.m. on the 11th, and even. 2 p.m. on the 12th. Still 60 mile an hour winds with gusts of 70. So by the time we reach, say, 2 o'clock in the morning on the 9th, the winds will probably won't be changing from there, is the current forecast. All right, so that, that, this does have the potential to become a hurricane, especially if we have good developing environmental conditions, which we could potentially have. Now let's move on to rain. Rain is looking a lot different here, at least for its future. Is forecast to become a mid-level category or low to mid-level category one hurricane. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for the Cabo Verde Islands, so we're starting to see some impacts, or we are seeing impacts there. Again, winds at 40, moving west, northwest at 12 miles an hour, which is a, it's a little slower than a tropical system should be moving, but it's moving at a good clip, pretty much average, nothing too out of the ordinary. 
Um, and probably by about 24 hours from now, it'll probably just be leaving the Cabo Verde Island. So expect expect impacts for at least another 12 to uh, 24 hours there for the Cabo Verde Islands from Tropical Storm Reen. Now the wind probabilities, let's turn those on. Let's turn on our wind probabilities here. I mean, besides Cabo Verde Islands, again, no land mass is within these wind probabilities, again, except for Cabo Verde Islands because they're getting hit by it right now. So you can pretty much say the chances are 100% just because of the storm is hitting there right now. Um, the highest chance for tropical storm force winds seems to be in the near future. And again, it, as it's, even as their forecast is strengthened to our hurricane, the probabilities for tropical storm force winds drop off because we're getting going into an uncertain future. So here is Reen. Okay, now notice with this system, how the tropical storm force winds are on the northern side of the storm, not all the way to the right like you saw with Paulette. I, this is why I think Reen is looking a little bit better organized. So the eastern and southern portions of the Cabo Verde Islands, not all of them, surprisingly, are under tropical storm warnings. But notice, by the time we head towards 5 p.m., this is CVT, so this might be in another time zone, uh, on September 8th, which is tomorrow, winds is 60 miles an hour. Then eventually they go up to 70, and by maybe 5 p.m. on the 10th, CVT time, 80 mile per hour winds with winds gusting to 100 miles an hour, which is category two, but again, that's wind gusts, not sustained winds. Then it remains at 80, and then it will fall to 75, potentially by 5 p.m. on the 12th in CVT time, with winds gusting to 90 miles an hour. And again, there's your uh, there's your wind probabilities right there. All right, so good news is there is no other landmass other than rain impacting the Cabo Verde Islands right now. There is no landmasses within the threat of these two systems, but it's always, we always have to watch for potentially, so basically, if this system were to keep, like Paulette has a better chance of heading farther west, this could impact the United States. But if these storms make a turn towards the north and bend towards the east, they could affect Europe. So it's kind of hard for these systems to not impact land. I mean, obviously, not every system that develops will impact land. But if it turns to the north, it can still impact a place like Europe. So don't think we're in the clear just because the storm is turning towards the north. We still have to watch Europe. So as for Rean, Paula, we haven't gotten this um, key messages yet uh, because it's not really impacting any land. But since we since this is impacting land, as for Rean. We have some key messages for it. So only two. So Rean is expected to produce tropical storm conditions. Cabo Verde Islands, it pretty much is right now. Tonight and early Tuesday. And again, tropical storm warnings are in effect. Um, and also, same message here. Heavy rainfall through Tuesday morning. Uh, could be tacking on several inches potentially. Now, let's go back to Paulette here. So Paulette, again, winds of 40 miles an hour, 1,005 millibars of pressure here. And if we go to the satellite imagery, how is this looking on satellite imagery? It doesn't look too bad. All right, but I believe by the National Hurricane Center, the movement was moving northwest. Now, looking on the satellite imagery, it looks like the storms are, why are the storms moving this way, right? I think there could be a little bit of westerly shear getting mixed in with this. Um, it almost looks like the, the cloudiness and the convection is getting dried off to the north and east, even though the storm is moving north and west. It actually looks like it's almost moving due north, actually. But I will say... For the record, that there was a lot of convection. All right, not bragging about the system or anything, but there was a lot of convection developing on that northern side. So, if this were to impact any land, there would be a lot of rainfall associated with this system because of so much convection. Are we seeing flaring up? So we can even see a strengthening in the eight o'clock update. We'll have to see. Um, but there could potentially be a little bit of shear mixed in. But for a forty mile per hour newly developed tropical storm, doesn't look too bad. Um, again, we do have that circulation underneath the co the convection, which is typical for a newborn tropical system, but. Hopefully that'll get better organized, or at least this storm itself hopes it will organize. Obviously, we don't want it to organize because we don't, we're done with chocolate systems for this year, or at least we want to be. So current storm location, about 42, 40, eh, 42 and a half ish degrees west and about 17 and a half degrees north. So those are your coordinates there. Um, we got our model track guidance here, and you can see a lot of models bring it a little bit farther west. They have it moving northwest. Then making a westward bend, then bending back to our northwest movement once again. That's what majority of the models go with. Maybe heading towards the United States and the Carolinas in the near future. A couple models have it turning towards the north and heading out the sea. Most models, though, do bring it a little bit farther west, so it's becoming a close call here for place with the Carolinas. Now, the GEFS tracks for Paulette here show an agreement over the first 96 hours, and then after that, it's kind of all over the place. We got models here, we got models here. All right, some make it below 980 millibars of pressure with a very strong storm some never take it below a thousand so the models aren't really agreeing with themselves now gefs parallel tracks um this is where the models just kind of like do this is why 
DeMoss kind of duke it out here. This is where it's really important to focus on that black line. What the like the middle point here because there is so many models. We have one model that takes it all the way over back to 35 degrees west. Then we have other models that take it back towards 75 degrees west all the way on the left. So <laughs> there's a huge window here where the system could track according to these models. And one model track has the pressure going below 950 millibars. I'd love to see that happen. It could. All right. Um, but some models do take a little bit further west. Some, a majority though, I believe, take it west at first and then the northward turn. That's probably what's most likely going to happen, but we're going to have to see here. As I always say, it does depend on that 500 millibar steering. Because that's what steers these tropical systems. Not to shear, the 500 millibar steering. So the model intensity guidance shows strengthening, according to a lot of these models, then weakening back to a very weak tropical storm, then re-strengthening once again. So only one model makes it to Category 3. Otherwise, the map will probably end about here. But since this one model takes it to Category 3, they have to expand the map. Like the pink represents Category 4 up there. But they have to expand it because one model has to say it's going to be a Category 3. There's always one outlier. Which is okay. Who knows? They, they could be right. You never know. Um, but a lot of the models do focus on a strengthening, then a brief weakening period, then a, another re-strengthening period. Now, let's take a look at our ship's agnostic message here. And as you can see, the wind shear, not looking too bad, but maybe over the next couple days or a few days, it could get a little bit unmanageable. 30 knots is a little much here. It's kind of pushing it. Um, sea surface temperatures, though, will be warming up as we progress. So notice that it's 27 now. 27, 27, then stays 28, 29, getting close to 30 over, over about a week out. As it gets closer to the Bermuda, the kind of that warm area of water there uh, for around Bermuda, so that can help it develop. Right now, moving about three miles an hour, that could speed up a little bit, uh, maybe even over towards 20 miles an hour uh, over about a week out. And as for the heat content, well, that will also be increasing over the next few days or a week. So this is why I think you're seeing a lot of models saying it could restrength, it could strengthen a little bit, then weaken then strengthen once again because the conditions are looking a lot more favorable here over the next say six seven days as opposed to the next two three or four days now we talk we focus on paulette for a while let's transition back to reen there's a tropical storm reen the one that has a better a better probability of becoming a hurricane 40 mile power winds now but pressure for this type of storm i think the pressure is actually pretty low lower than it should be thousand one millibars so this this storm could be one to watch out for uh but sadly, a little bit definitely has that spin. Doesn't look too good. We're not seeing as much convection as we saw with Paulette, but I think it definitely has more of a spin. We have a lot more spinning attributes. We got the we got the great outflow, which I think um, Rain has a lot more better looking outflow than Paulette does. Um, as you can see, though, it's right over the Cabo Verde Islands. I think the southern Cabo Verde Islands are getting hit a lot worse than the northern parts. But pretty much the entire island chain will be seeing effects from this. It's kind of hard to miss it. Now, when you look at the current low storm location. About twenty, about twenty-two to, or twenty-one and a half to twenty-two degrees west, and about sixteen degrees north. The low is is right before the Cabo Verde Islands. Now is as of two p.m. So I think the low is probably like right around here by now. Maybe just it could even be making a little like a little bit of a landfall, quote unquote landfall on the islands if the low happens to track right across, which I think it could because it's moving in a west northwest direction. So it could move right over the islands, and it's not going to weaken any because these islands are very tiny. They're not too mountainous. Um, even if they are, though, they're, they're very tiny islands, so they won't impact the storm strength any. Now, why they're calling this Tropical Storm 18? Probably because this probably is the 18th named storm of the season, which is pretty uh, it's pretty scary. Uh, but notice how the storm is moving northwest, and all the models, except for a couple, may have it making a quick northern turn out to sea. I think Reen has a better chance of uh, going out to sea than Paulette. Um, so when we look at the GEFS model tracks, again, they all agree. Northwest track at first, then making a north and even northeastern turn out to sea. Now, the GEFS parallel tracks, of course, are going to be all crazy, but again, the black line kind of shows moving in northwest and a northeast direction, which is what a lot, of, a lot of the models do say. But there's those few stragglers, or those few outliers that we do definitely have to consider here that track it a little bit farther towards the south and towards the west, closer to the United States. Closer, not necessarily. It, I'm not necessarily saying it, it will get close, but that's a possibility too. Now, but the model intensity guys, they're showing this becoming a lot more, a lot stronger. A lot of the models do make it a category one hurricane. Some also make it a pretty strong tropical storm. Even one model makes it a category two and then just taking a complete nosedive. 
All right, straight down. But either way, this system does have a good probability of becoming a low-end or mid-end Category 1 hurricane. Now, looking at the shear right now, there is no shear, all right? One knot is basically nothing. Uh, wind shear will be remaining below 30 knots for the entire time. Maybe over the next seven days, it could go up a little bit, but it's not too bad. Now, sea surface temperatures, 20, 28, around 27, could drop below 27 Celsius, maybe even dropping below 80 Fahrenheit, then going back up as we have over the next week or so. Storm speed, some graph to watch as well. Um, moving about 12 miles an hour, that probably won't be changing too much. It could slow down a little bit over the next week. We'll have to watch out for that. And as for the heat content, well, that won't even be getting more than 15 out of hundreds. So heat content isn't too... Uh, there's not, as the storm heads farther west, we'll see the heat content go up. But as of right now, heat content won't, won't be getting more than 20. All right, maybe if you're lucky, it could get to 19 over the next week or so. But heat content isn't too high when the waters when we're this close to Africa. We have to get a little bit farther out towards the west. We're closer to the Caribbean. Water's a lot better. Now, GFS model, I definitely do agree with. Okay, here's Paulette. Pretty strong, but green is the stronger one. And maybe another tropical wave that the National Hurricane Center was pinpointing here that I was kind of noticing last time. So I'm glad National Hurricane Center put it on there because I was noticing that. Um, and then all three systems could gain some pretty good strength. Look at September 13th here. We have Paulette here still staying pretty far to the south. We have rain that's making a northward track this way. Paulette's going this way. And then we have our next system, which looks pretty large. That can be coming off the coast of Africa. So how strong could these systems get? Um, as for rain, I don't know if you guys can see. If I zoom in on the storm, it's going to kind of screw it up a little bit. It might make the map look a little bit weird because this GFS has a hard time tracking the system sometimes. But if you can, if you can notice, I'll even try. Actually, I'll try and zoom in a little bit. You might, guys might be able to see a little bit better. Um, Hopefully you guys see it. There's a little bit of purple there indicating a Category 1 hurricane there for rain. Um, as for Paulette, however, doesn't look too strong. Let's actually, let's go back here. All right. Again, there's your tropical storm status right there for Paulette. Maybe a low to mid-level tropical storm. All right, not too bad. Hopefully you guys can see that green and yellow. And then the third system that comes off could have some tropical storm force winds already as soon as it reaches the Cabo Verde Islands. These storms are strengthening pretty quick. Once they leave Africa, they get over that water, they are strengthening. And as for the gem model here, kind of pinpointing kind of the same thing here, um, not looking too different. Um, however, I don't think they make rain quite as strong. Here's Paulette looking a lot stronger here. Here's rain, and there's our third system, our, our third system out of this group. I would say this is our, like probably our 19th or 20th system almost. Uh, maybe probably 19th. Again, Paulette, Reen, our third system. And let's see how strong we took we took a look at Reen. Let's see how strong they make Paulette here. Maybe close to a category one hurricane. 980 millibars of pressure is very low, so it could even be more than that. So these systems got to watch very closely. Hopefully I'll be able to give you guys updates. Um, but just keep an eye out, okay? Because you never know. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Definitely watch that steering here. Keep it here. Hopefully I'll be able to give you guys updates. I am the weather dude. Signing off till next time. I'll catch you guys in the next video.